guys, I'm Carol. Welcome back to Cara Jo Plans, where I am planning and budgeting. I've been through a debt-free journey, and I'm here to help you guys do the same and get your life organized, especially those single moms that are struggling with their finances. I love to help you guys out. Um, so what are we going to do today? I've gotten a question a couple times in my DMs and on some videos about trying to figure out the difference between the debt snowball and the debt avalanche. So I thought I would draw up a real simple example leaving out some of the details like calculating interest and all of that and just kind of compare the two. Um, neither of them's right, neither of them's wrong, but there are some benefits and cons to both of them. So, and like I said, I used mostly a debt snowball, but then I modified to make it work for me. So there are some things to um, consider when you're doing them. And you know, of course you do what's best for you, but these are two of the most common ways to pay off debt. So let's go through what they are and what the difference is and let's take a look at how they work. Okay, so what I did was I set up an example person in debt. So right now this person has five credit cards in debt and it doesn't matter whether they're credit cards, student loans, etc. But I used five credit cards and as an example, A, B, C, D, and E. And I listed out the balances. So one has the three hundred dollar debt, five hundred, one thousand, twenty five hundred, and six thousand. And then some of them have an interest rate as well. So ten percent, seventeen percent, zero percent, twenty four percent, and thirteen percent. So when you list out all your debts like this, this is where you want to start. So list them all out, list their balances, and list the interest rates depending on which method you're using. I think this is a nice chart to kind of help you decide once you know every, what you want to do with both of them. So Snowball, we would pay the debt with the lowest balance first. And the concept between, behind that is if you think about a Snowball, it starts very small. And as it rolls, you build up more snow and more snow and more snow. So you get that great victory when you pay off the low balance one first, and then you take whatever you were paying on the low balance, the lowest balance, and then add it to what you're paying on the second one and see how the snowball grows. So each month, the more you pay off, the more you're paying towards the one card you're focusing on whereas the rest of the cards you pay the minimum amount due until you get to that card. Now the avalanche, if you think of an avalanche, you make the highest interest card your priority and pay that first. That way you're not paying as much in interest. So you're focusing on minimizing the amount of interest paid as opposed to paying off a card first. So if I was looking at these debts here, and I was using the debt snowball method, I would pay my cards off in this order. A, B, C, D, and then E. If I was doing the avalanche method, I would pay off D, then B, then E, then A, sorry, A, and then C, because C has a 0%, so that's the one I would do last. So let me rewrite those again just so that A is clear. D, B, E, A, C. Okay, so you can already see we're focusing on different cards immediately from the get-go. So on this one we're focusing, with the Avalanche, we're focusing on a $2,500 debt first. This one we're focusing on a $300 debt first. So. What I've done on the next page is kind of walked you through what the first few months of doing each of these methods might look like. Now, granted, I did not calculate how much interest would accrue. Um, just looking at the base balances, ignoring any interest charges that you might get, just so you can kind of see how this works. So first I did the snowball. And I said, okay, every month we have $500 to put towards debt. So in month one, what I did was I listed out my cards A, B, C, D, E, okay? And then I looked at the minimum balances for every card except A, okay? So I'm gonna cover up A. 
So card E has a minimum balance due of $160, so I'm going to pay that. Card D has a minimum balance of $50. Card C has a minimum balance of $40. And card B has a minimum balance of $30. So I take all of that away from my 500 that I have available to pay towards debt. Those are minimum balances. And what's left over is $220. So I'm gonna put that $220 towards card A because that's the card I'm focusing on first. So anything extra I put towards this card. Okay, so that's month one. Now month two, remember card A only had a $300 balance. So I really only have $80 left to pay on card two. Okay, so you're already seeing a victory. It's month two and you're already knocking out one of your credit cards. So then we go back again. Minimum balance for card E was 160. Card D was 50. Card C was 40. And I knew card A I only had to pay 80 towards and it would be paid off and gone. So I took everything extra that I was paying on card A and started paying off card B. So I'm going to put $170 towards card B. Okay, look at month three. Card A is paid off. I don't have to worry about that one at all anymore. It's gone. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm focusing on card B. So I'm going to look at my minimum balances for my other three cards. 160 towards E, 50 towards D. C, 40, and I still have $500 towards debt that I can use towards debt. So if this is 160, 210, 250, I'm gonna put $250 towards card B, okay? Because that's that totals up my 250, okay? Month four, card A is still all paid off. I don't have to worry about that one anymore, so I'm still looking at these four. Now, card B had a balance of 500, but look at what I've paid already. So now I only have $50 left to pay off on card B. Look, month four, and you've already knocked out two of your five credit cards. How amazing is, a feeling, is that feeling? You've had two victories already in four months. So that's something to think about with Snowball, is you get those victories and those that motivation. Um, a lot of paying off debt is behavior. It's not really about the numbers. So this way is more rewarding emotionally, if you can already see that. So, okay, back to month four. I only have $50 left to pay on card B. So I'm gonna pay that. I'm gonna pay my minimum on E and D. And once I total that up and take that away from 500, I have 240 left to put towards card C. Okay, that, so that's my 500. Month five, look how awesome this is. Card A is paid off. Card B is paid off. My minimum for card E is 160. My minimum for card D is 50. Everything else gets to go to card C, so we can start knocking out card C, okay? So, at this point, we're making a pretty good dent on card C because it's only $1,000. So we've paid 40, 80, 120, plus 240 is 360, plus 290 is five, $650 towards card C already. So that one's almost paid off too and by month five. We only have a couple more months left to pay on that one. So you can see where you're getting rewards and each little reward makes you keep going further. That snowballs building and building and building. So by the time you get done with this, you're putting all $500 to Cardi. Imagine how quickly that one's gonna be paid off because you're already making a minimum payment on it. So this is snowball. So behaviorally, this method provides motivation by achieving smaller goals sooner. Okay, does that make sense for everybody? If it doesn't, drop a question down in the comments and you can tell how excited I get about Snowball because I love those little wins, okay? Now let's take a look at Avalanche. I set up the same credit cards. We just changed the order we were focusing them on by the interest rate and we still have $500 to put towards debt. 
So let me open this up so we can kind of compare. Month one looks similar, but not exactly. So card D is the one we're going to focus on. So I'm going to hide that one first. Card C had a $40 minimum. Card A, which we never really looked at the minimum payment for card A for, but it had $20 minimum. So we're going to pay $20 towards card A. Card E still has the $160 minimum, and card B had a $30 minimum. So once we total all this up from the $500, we still have $250 to put towards card D. Okay? And if you remember, card D had a balance of $2,500. Okay? So D is the one we're focusing on next month. We're still doing our minimum toward these four, and we still have $250 to put towards card D. Okay, so we've paid off 500 of our 2,500, but still there. So month three, more of the same. Month four, more of the same. Month five, more of the same. So we're in month five now, and yeah, we're knocking down some debt and getting rid of some of those interest charges, but we haven't had any wins. We haven't crossed any of these cards off. So you see there where the difference is? We're still plugging away. Every month's the same. Yeah, we're paying off some debt, but we're not seeing any wins yet. And if you're a math person and you understand that you're saving money on interest over, over the long run, great. But if budgeting is a struggle to you and it's something that is behaviorally, money is something that's behaviorally a problem for you, not a math problem for you, you're going to get frustrated after month five where you're still chugging and chugging and not seeing that zero balance reward. Okay. So mathematically, this method's going to cost you less in interest, but behaviorally, you're not seeing those rewards. So there's more of a chance that your motivation might wane. You might get bored or distracted and not focus on your debt as much. But if math is your driving factor and you know that you're saving interest, this might be great for you. Um, I started with the snowball and then when I had, I think, two debts left, then I started attacking the one with the higher interest and focused on getting that paid off. So I started with snowball and then as I got more of my debt paid off and became more consistent with debt pay off, I did switch to avalanche. So like I said, there's nothing wrong um, and then right here, this little thing that I did, I totaled up what balances you had left. So, and again, this is ignoring interest charges. I don't know how to calculate interest and I don't care. But if you were just paying on the principal, for example, over on Avalanche, you would only have $7,800 left. And on Snowball, you would still have $7,850 left, but two cards paid off. No cards paid off. Money is not always a numbers thing, guys. A lot of it is in your head. So I would be feel a whole lot better myself having two cards paid off and know that I have knocked out two complete debts. They're gone forever. Doesn't matter. Like when I, when I first got divorced, I was in a lot of debt and I knew it was going to take me a long time to get out of that debt, but I knew I had to stick with it. And knowing that I had paid off two debts and they were gone forever and I was never, ever, 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 ever going to use those credit cards again really helped me keep moving because I had so much on my plate as a newly single mom that I needed these victories. I needed something that was a win. You know what I mean? Um, but as I got better at money and money became more of something that I did every day, I said, yeah, you know what? I do want to tackle that card with the high interest rate first. So I did switch over. So again, nothing is set in stone. It's what works best for you. And you can definitely mix and match and use different methods. But what I wanted you to, to see was the difference in the methodology and who may or may not benefit from each method. And that hopefully helps you understand both of these and helps you make a choice at how you want to start paying off your debt. I'm not telling you either way is right or wrong. I'm telling you this is how this one works and these are some benefits and these are some benefits of doing it this way. And again, like I said, I don't calculate interest charges. So that's something else to kind of consider and map out in your own budget. Um, 
But I hope this was helpful, and if you like this video, please comment below and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this and what other questions you have that I might be able to help you with. And thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.